Hi, let's take a look at a few examples. As you can see, shadows bring great realism into the game, help us to have a better understanding of spatial relationships between objects, and they just look great, cool. But how do we code them? Imagine we have this scene. With ray tracing, to know if that fragment is in shadow, we can just cast a ray to the light source. If the tray hits something, then we can say that the light doesn't reach this point and thus we are in shadow. And otherwise, if a ray hits the light, then we are fully lit. Pretty straightforward. But what if we use rasterizing? If the scene is rendered from a light perspective, its depth buffer can look like this. Remember, the depth buffer contains depth of the closest fragment. Then, if we know the fragment's position relative to the light, we can just compare its depth to the corresponding one that is stored in depth buffer. If a fragment's depth was greater than one that is stored in depth buffer, or in other words, the closest to a light, then it means of course that we are in shadow. So, because of using a depth texture map for shadow calculation, this technique is known as shadow mapping. It's pretty cool, but has disadvantages that are tricky to walk around. Usually, after implementing that simple algorithm, this strange-looking artifact appears, and it is known as shadow acne. It is only visible on surfaces that should be lit. It's caused by some fragments that happen to be above and under depth values, so if we apply some small bias value, everything should be okay. Yeah, it may seem to fix shadow acne, but it introduces another artifact known as Peter Panning. We can detect that by seeing light leaks in some regions, usually close to the surface intersection. I will let it be for now, let's move forward. As you can see, our shadows are pretty hard and blocky. To make them softer, we can use a technique known as percentage closer filtering or just PCF. All we have to do is for each fragment that should be in shadow, we find the average shadow value of all fragments within some radius. Okay? And already that gives good result. This method can also be improved. Some blue noise sample kernel can be generated and used as a sample pattern. We can extend it even further by rotating this kernel by some random angle each time we need to do a sample. Our problem now is that we are limited by the resolution of our shadow map. The bigger the shadow map resolution, the more memory we use, the more detailed shadows we have. But imagine that we want to see shadows 1000 meters away from us. That way our shadow map should be maybe 100k by 100k to produce good quality. And obviously that's impossible, at least in 2021. Here is an example of 4096 by 4096 texture. Man, the quality is really bad. But luckily for us, there is a technique which is known as cascaded shadow mapping, that is really popular and great. Let's say that this is our viewing frostum, and here we have a light. Instead of having one big texture per viewing frostum, we can split our frostum into multiple parts, create multiple textures of the same resolution, and use them as shadow maps for corresponding regions. That way we'll have a lot more detailed resolution in places that are close to our eye, and smaller in places that are far. Not surprisingly, this technique works really good and is straightforward to implement.
Variance shadow mapping is an elegant approach to have nice and smooth shadows in your game. They are similar to basic shadow maps, but instead of comparing depths, its main idea is to compute the probability of a point to be in shadow. Nvidia guys nicely described that technique and some optimizations in this article, which I'll attach to the description of course. So the first thing is to compute moments of depth distribution. In other words, we create another texture or another channel of a texture to hold squared depth. To produce soft shadows, we can already blur these textures. Then the mean and the various squared are computed using these formulas. And after that, Trebuchet inequality used to get the probability of a point to be in shadow. Implementing this gives these results. And these if texture is filtered. Notice that there is no shadow acne or peter panning here. And that's pretty much it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed and learned something new. Please support me on Patreon if you want to see more such content. And yeah, thanks for watching. Goodbye. Zombie apocalypse.